Hi all, uh, thanks for joining us for the Dairy Australia Forage Value Index webinar today. Uh, I'm Kath Leskin, I'm going to be the facilitator for the webinar today. Um, so thank you very much for joining us. Ron Prestige and Kevin Smith are our speakers. Now Ron is the Director of Ag Insight, it's a company that provides advisory services in science and technology for the agriculture and broader primary industries. Previous to this, he's had various leadership roles within Agriculture Victoria. And Ron is the project manager of the Forage Value Index. So welcome, Ron. Thanks, Kev. And Kevin is currently the Professor of Plant Agronomy and Breeding at the University of Melbourne. Uh, previously, he's had seen roles with Agriculture Victoria, the CRC Dairy Futures and Dairy Bio. And his current research interests include pasture and forage plant breeding and methods to measure the economic value of new traits in pasture grasses and legumes. So welcome, Kevin. Thanks, Kev. Um, both Kevin and Ron might be um, very well known to quite a few of you on the line. I just want to give you, um, the Forage Value Index was launched in February of this year at the Australian Dairy Conference in Adelaide. And since its launch, uh, we've had close to 2,000 downloads of the tables and the fact sheets uh, from the Dairy Australia website. And pretty much the feedback's been very positive, uh, which is great. And um, feedback from farmers is that they are using the uh, forage value index tables and the information that's on the website. So we'd like to make sure that everybody knows about this and can uh, talk to farmers confidently about uh, the Dairy Australia Forage Value Index. If anybody's having any issues uh, receiving the webinar, could you contact Redback on 1800 733 416 um, and also any bandwidth issues, they should be able to help you with those as well. Um, how we're going to run this is um, pretty much that we'll have the speakers speaking and, and you can fire in your questions via your chat box which you can access on the left hand side of your screen. Um, so if you've got questions as we go, please send them in and we will answer them intermittently as we're going through the presentation. Um, and if we don't answer your question, don't worry about that. We will be gathering them up and putting out um, a Q&A at the end of the webinar or within the next few days. And the webinar is also being recorded, so it will be available on the DA website. Um, and we'll be keen to hear your feedback as well. So there is a quick survey at the end of this webinar today, so we'd appreciate you hanging online and completing that for us. So with no further ado, I will hand over to Ron, who's going to give us a bit of an introduction to the FBI. Thanks, Ron. Okay, thanks very much, Kath, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> so today we want to discuss um, a new tool that was recently released by Dairy Australia, the Forage Value Index, or the FBI, as we've been calling it. And whilst the tool is designed to help um, farmers select the best cultivar um, for their farm, um, farmers also need to focus on other aspects of good uh, pasture and grazing management uh, in order to optimise the, uh, the new cultivars. The best cultivars won't perform well if there are limitations around soil fertility or um, if grazing management is not ideal. So it comes as a package, not as a, a solution, a standalone solution. <coughs> All right. So. Indices in, in dairy farming are not, not new. Um, dairy Australia has been involved in bull breeding indices now for such as the Good Bulls Guide for many years. Pasture indices though are, are, uh, have, um, have been operating now in Ireland since 2010 and New Zealand since 2012. And, and uh, we've just, as we started our planning for the uh, Forage Value Index in Australia in uh, 2015. Both Ireland and New Zealand, um, both countries started with uh, a fairly simple model um, as we have, um, as looking at yield, seasonal yields and economic value. Um, and other traits such as uh, nutritive value um, and moving now towards persistence traits um, have been added to their indices or indexes 
indices as, uh, as this information and data becomes available. <clears throat> we all know the uh, importance of um, homegrown forage and more specifically pasture is a key driver of farm profitability. Um, seasonal conditions aside, the historical rate of pasture renovation in southeast Australia is low. Um, market research that we've done shows producers lack confidence in the data supplied by seed companies. And um, we also um, received a lot of feedback that many farmers are aware and are, are using indices in New Zealand and Ireland um, that, and they've uh, been requesting a similar um, tool for uh, their Australian situation. So what is the Forage Value Index? Well, it's, it's a rating system that helps farmers and their advisors to make decisions when selecting the best perennial ryegrass for their farm. Um, it will provide an accurate, reliable and independent assessment of the potential economic value of perennial ryegrasses, cultivars in dairy production. At the moment, the Australian FBI Dairy um, Forage Value Index is only for perennial ryegrass. But as you'll see, um, we have, do have potential to include other pasture and forage species into the future. The Forage Value Index is a system that ranks pasture cultivars according to their estimated economic benefits of improvement in selected agronomic traits to a farm. It is derived by multiplying the performance value by the economic value. Performance values are derived from pasture variety trial data and are specific to cultivars. At the moment, we only have um, seasonal yields, and these are converted to performance values. Economic values relate to how much um, an extra unit of a trait, in this case kilograms of dry matter production, is worth to a farming system. And we know that at different times of the year, the value of that extra dry matter is worth um, a different um, amount, and we'll talk about that um, a bit later on. Just before we um, show you how we've calculated the FEI, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the data sources because these are the data underpins the. Um, the credibility of the FEI um, in many ways. And we know it's, it's long term and an expensive process collecting enough data from um, pasture variety trials. MLA, um, Meat and Livestock Australia, commenced pasture variety trialling in, uh, in Australia in 2011. Um, estab they established an uh, evidence based system. Um, scientifically credible. Um, there was a high degree of independence in how the data was coll uh, collected and the trials were managed and the trials were audited, independently audited as well. And since 9 2011, um, MLA and the seed industry have uh, continued to fund and manage pasture variety trials um, up uh, as we, uh, and, and these are continuing uh, today. <coughs> so since 9, 2011, this map shows the, uh, the data sources from pasture variety trials that uh, the data is available from um, these circles on, on the map. In total, 68 trials have been conducted, 26 sites over across nine different plant species. 
Now, not every cultivar is entered into every trial, and but in total, there are 35 trials in total have had um, some perennial ryegrass cultivars entered for evaluation. New trials are sown every year, and even now, today, at the present time, there are four trials of perennial ryegrass, uh, one in each of the main dairying regions in southeast Australia. And these trials will conclude in 2018. And though the data from these current trials, as it becomes available, will be included into the uh, Forage Value Index database um, and updated on a, uh, which will be updated on a regular basis. <coughs> so the main data source is, is, the, past, is the pasture variety trials. Um, there's also a very small number of registered seed company trials which have um, used the same, exactly the same protocols as the um, industry pasture variety trials that I mentioned um, before in the earlier slide. All the trials are, are conducted under strict um, protocols and uh, the criteria for entry into the dairy um, forage value index are listed there in the, um, on the right hand side. So firstly, all cultivars or varieties as, as used in the trade need to be confirmed on the Australian Seed Federation pasture database. So there's no coded lines, they're all, they're all cultivars in the, uh, commercially available at the moment. Um, all, tr all data has to have had a minimum of three years data per trial and for entry into the FBI they needed to have a minimum of three trials. So you can't have one trial of three years, you need three trials of three years to be, have an entry point. All the harvesting and management of the trials is done under um, strict protocols and in this case we've used estimates of dry matter production um, um, only used the cut and dry method as distinct from using um, estimates using the rising plate meter or the capacitance probes. Um, so putting these strict uh, entry criteria on the, on the data means that a number of the trials that I showed earlier won't meet the criteria for entry into the PVI or have not met the criteria. All the data is, um, has been analysed by um, Degeta statisticians um, who are independently um, sourced and to oversee the, um, the quality of the information and, and data um, and the protocols, the trial protocols, um, we established a technical committee which included representatives from Agriculture Victoria, University of Melbourne, Meat and Livestock Australia, Dairy Australia, the Australian Seed Federation and two seed company agronomists. Um, so once the data is combined and analysed in this way, we have a powerful data set that uh, can be sorted and uh, analysed um, in its totality. And what we do have is then is an aggregated data pool from South e for Southeast Australia. It's the most comprehensive and accurate data pool for pasture cultivars in Australia. Our initial analysis or analyses have said have shown that there are no large differences in overall seasonal rankings of cultivars between the different regions and I've listed the four regions uh, on the slide. However, while total yield is affected on, uh, on how the trial, uh, the location and the environment of the trial, whilst um, total plant yield is affected by environmental conditions, the best plant genetics tend to perform the best in each region.
We're just going to pause here for a moment. Kath, I might throw to you if you yeah, want to. Yeah, so uh, our audience has been pretty quiet. If anybody's got any questions, um, you can send them in from the type the message right at the bottom of your screen. Um, we're going to start now with Kevin and uh, we're going to talk about the economic value and how the total the FBI is, is put together. So if anyone's got any questions, uh, please type them and we'll answer some of them. It's still all very quiet. So if um, Kevin will start and talk about how we calculate the FEI, but if anybody's got questions, uh, send them in. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Kath, and welcome everybody. Um, as Ron mentioned, these kind of value indices are widely used in other species to assess the relative value of novel genetics. But there are some particular challenges when we come to valuing pastures for dairy production because obviously pastures are not traded directly unlike say milk or wool or meat and we also have the fact that we know that um, dairy farmers routinely use alternative sources of nutrients throughout the year to meet the supply of the cattle. So what I'm going to do is very briefly go through the steps to take the data from pasture performance and then the estimates of economic value to come up with what we call the forage value index. So there are two key elements. One is taking the trial data from the pasture trials, analysing that and calculating what we call the performance value. So that is how the new genetics or new varieties perform. We then want to place an economic value on that pasture of cultivar performance. So how we do that is to take a range of farm level data that look at the feed base of uh, some uh, case study farms and then think about the herd feed demand and supply across the year looking at that based on energy and the pasture supplying that energy. We're also fortunate that um, Dairy Australia has a large database of data on hay and grain prices which are in fact those alternative sources of energy. So we have the ability to look at using these new pastures in a milk production system but valuing them in terms of what is the value of the new pasture and the extra pasture in that milk production system. And so by multiplying the performance value with the economic value we can come up with the weightings that are now enable us to give you a forage value index which allows the decision to be made on the relative value of a whole number of traits and in this case the traits we have as Ron's mentioned are the seasonal performances as well as the total yield. There are really three steps to calculate these economic values. The first is to look at some relevant case study farms in the key dairy environments and come up with an estimate of the energy demand of a herd across the year and then look at the pasture consumption of those across the year. So by looking at those two elements we're able to come up with the supply and demand kind of equations and then we can say using pasture trial data we can say what is the likely increase in percentages of extra pasture by choosing a higher performing variety and applying that value to some regional pasture production curves. So what I mean by that, we have an example here for southwest Victoria where you can look at the um, pasture uh, production curve there and also one looking at Gippsland so we know that different environments have different pasture production patterns and what we did was say that if you we were looking at having some extra pasture available so we were moving in southwest Victoria for instance from saying instead of having seven and a half tons of dry matter 
per hectare consumed from the pasture base. We'll look at moving that to eight tonnes, so an extra half a kilo, uh, 500 kilos, sorry. And then um, for the Gippsland situation, we're looking there at moving from 8.6 tonnes to 9.3. So you're looking at the marginal value of that extra pasture consumption. The final part is then saying, well, we know then that we've got these demand and supply curves. We've got some extra pasture to be used in the system. We then need to think in the final step is actually how that pasture would be used in these real life situations and how to go about valuing it. And as I previously mentioned, we do know that um, on a farm throughout the year, there are usually differences in the amount of energy that the cows require that are supplied from the pasture. And at other times of the year, the extra energy that is routinely used on the farm will come from other sources, either conserved fodder in the form of hay or silage, bought in grain or bought in other <coughs> excuse me, nutrient sources. So if we think in this example that I'm showing you there, <coughs> Excuse me. What you can see is that in January, having extra pasture from these better pasture genetics would mean that you would likely, on this example farm, use less cereal hay. As you move through the year, you'll notice that once you move to, say, September and October, the extra pasture that was available then would be at a time when you wouldn't actually be using that directly, but increasing the amount of fodder that you have for forage conservation purposes. So the extra pasture has a value at different times of the year and at every time of the year, but what it is likely to be used for on farm will vary. So when we bring that all together across the four dairy regions that we talk about, we come up with an estimate economic value of having every extra one kilogram increase in pasture dry matter across these seasons. And you can see, first of all, that we're being a little bit different and um, defying the conventional logic. And we have five seasons in our year, not four. And so in the table you can see on your screen there, you can see that autumn is March, April, May, winter, June, July, early spring, August, September, late spring, October, November. And that reflects differences in the uh, demand for pasture, particularly in spring. So we've sp split spring into those two uh, different seasons there. And you can see that the uh, values vary across the year, reflecting on average. Winter is the time when it's most difficult to uh, grow feed, so it has the highest value. And then generally in late spring, there is a reduced value per kilogram of extra pasture dry matter, but it still has a value. The other thing you'll see is that the values are slightly different from environment to environment, and they reflect two key factors. One is the uh, ease of growing pasture in those environments and the um, supply curve, and the other is the cost of getting uh, alternative feeds into those areas or alternative energy sources. So again, if anyone has got some questions, let us know. But what I might move on to then from those examples is sort of summarise to say what the information that is available in the FBI, given that I've now explained briefly how we go about it. So. We have a rating system based on the relative economic value of the seasonal yield for those four regions. And that's a total yield. But we also have the seasonal performance ratings in winter, early spring, late spring, summer, and autumn. So you have, in essence, if you like, an overall ranking of the cultivar. And then these individual seasonal performances that uh, producers can use to say, well, I want to put amongst the high yielding varieties, I'd like a variety that is super good in winter. So I'll use those together. But also importantly, we know that there are a number of other attributes 
that are important when making choices. So when I move to the table in the next slide, you'll see that producers do get information around endophyte, ploidy, heading date, and also sources of the variety. So the next slide shows an example of the overall forage variety index for northern Victoria. And there's a lot of data on this screen, so I'd encourage everyone after the webinar to get onto the Dairy Australia website and look at these um, up-to-date examples. So these are just a couple of examples, but you'll be able to really spend a bit of time going around the tables and familiarising yourself with them. But what you can see is that there is a, a list of the cultivars, and then the first column in these is the for, forage variety index. And as you scroll down with your eyes to the bottom, you'll see that Victoria ryegrass here has a value of zero. That's not because it has no value, it is the benchmark. So the others are values relative to the performance of Victorian ryegrass. As you move across the table, you'll see that the individual uh, values for autumn, winter, early spring, late spring, summer are there. So again, you can look at a variety in high overall performance and then also look at those individual aspects. But you can also say, well, I am very interested in my system to have a ryegrass, for instance, that does not contain the standard endophyte. So you could choose one that has an endophyte that has a, a profile you like, or diploid or tetraploid, or looking at aspects of flowering time. The final column is the information that shows the number of trials. And as Ron's mentioned, as more trials become available, we will get more data. The final part of the slide that I think is really important is the colour bars. And I want to come back and end with that that what you'll see there is that the green colour bar on this overall performance are varieties that are not statistically different to each other. And you can see there's a lot of overlap. And over time, we would expect more differentiation between varieties. But that's also an aspect too, because this is the overall forage value index across the whole year. I'll move now to another table, which is a table, again, Please go online on the website and look for these. But this example here is for Gippsland. And this is ranked for the autumn performance. And again, the coloured bars here we've coded to say green is the top performance and then going through the rainbow. Um, and you can see that if you were interested in autumn performance, there's a group of varieties that perform similarly to each other. And then there's what? you know, eight different classifications there. So again, it enables a supplier, retailer, dairy farmer to very quickly look at how the varieties aggregate together. But you'll also see the table contains the same information that was in the previous table. So just reordered slightly, there is a column there after the seasonal performance, say FVI Gippsland, and that's the overall rating for the total year. Yeah. So a producer who was interested in autumn production could say, I'll choose between one of those green grouped varieties, but I'll also look at what its overall performance is to give me an idea of making that final purchasing decision. So the key message from this is that there's a lot of detail if individual suppliers or farmers wish to drill mm -hmm. down, but the take home message is choose among the green varieties as a message. And also that there's not generally one best variety. There are a group of varieties that will serve your needs depending what they are. I think now what I might do is just throw back to Ron to wrap things up and bring things together. But again, if anyone has any questions, get tapping on the keyboard. So maybe this part of what you're going to wrap up with, Ron, we have had a question in asking about when will, when will we see other species other than ryegrass in the FBI. So thank you. That's a great question. Yeah, thank, thanks, uh, thanks, Kath, and thanks for the question. Um, we will cover this in, in a couple <coughs> of minutes, but um, at the moment we are 
as, as we said, we've, um, we've just released the tables the first time. Um, we're still modifying some of the tables and you saw the, the ones that Kevin put up. They look different now on the Dairy Australia website than what they did three weeks ago. Um, we don't have a time set for, for when we'll have other species built in, uh, incorporated in the FEI. We need to do that assessment of the, um, what data are available, how many trials, how many cultivars, um, before we can uh, be clear on that. We will update the tables on an annual basis in time for the autumn renovation sowing period. So um, our deadlines are if whatever we can get in to in improve the um, FEI before December of this year, we will do it. Um, and forage alternative um, pasture species such as annual and, and Italian ryegrasses particularly are um, pretty much high on our priority list. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, so Ron, just on that, we've had another question here about Italian ryegrass. Um, so obviously from some areas, dairy areas, that's a high priority. So that'll be about the same time? That's the same. Same, same answer really, Kat, yeah. Yep. yep. And how often will the FBI be updated? That's somebody else is yep. asking that question. So we, we have data coming in every year um, uh, and we will update the tables every year in time prior to the uh, autumn renovation period. We will also, um, clearly it needs to go through a, a number of quality assurance checks and balances before we put the tables out. Um, that will involve um, going through the uh, industry technical committees um, just to make sure we've, we've got it right. Um, but, and uh, so we'd be aiming for the end of the calendar year to have these tables available. Before we go on, Ron, too, there's another question here. Uh, just Kevin, you had that um, table up in terms of the value of each extra kilo of dry matter. And someone's asking about the value of the Tasmanian system in the late spring, that it's right down at 11 cents. Can you give us some reasons as to why that's... Yeah, that's so the, re the reason for that will reflect that in that Tasmanian production system, there is actually a, a surplus of feed in late spring. So you're looking at in the not replacing the likely use of that extra kilogram of dry matter on farm will not be replacing a relatively more expensive matter on farm, will not be replacing a relatively more expensive source of concentrate. It will be being used in a fodder conservation role. So. Um, it's to give that relative value, but acknowledging that there is always a value in the extra kilogram. It just slightly varies according to what it's being used for on farm. And the highest value comes when you're knocking out an expensive energy source. OK, thanks, Kevin. I hope that explains that for that listener. Um, if there's no more questions on that, we will move on, but feel free to keep popping in your questions as you see fit. Okay, thanks uh, Kevin, thanks Kath. So we've, we've picked up this slogan, Go for Green. Um, we've used colour bands rather than um, say stars or other, other mechanisms to <coughs> separate the cultivars. <coughs> cultivars are separated on uh, statistical errors or standard errors as, as we call it. And we're encouraging farmers to use cultivars from the first colour band, which is the green band. Um, there is no difference from the cultivars within the band, within the same colour band. Um, so uh, we're, we're saying choose one from those colour bands and then look at what um, seasonal um, yields or seasonal performance um, that you really want to um, incorporate into your farm. And as Kevin said, if it's um, for winter production or autumn production, um, choose one that maximises uh, autumn or winter production at that time. And we've also um, put in other information there so that uh, um, it'll be possible in the near, very near future to sort on some of these uh, other attributes such as ploidy, end of flight and heading date. 
So just in, to quickly summarise, the tables are available on the Dairy Australian website uh, for four, re four regions and um, for the total yield and the four, five um, seasonal uh, five seasons. In terms of the future, um, how will it evolve? As I said, this is the first year we've released the tables and it will continue to evolve um, over the next few years as more data and more analyses become available. We plan on updating the tables annually in time to enable farmers to make decisions on uh, uh, prior to the autumn renovation period. The, uh, the future, we think it will evolve to, to more, uh, as we include more regional data, we'll get greater reliability of the tables. Um, there'll be more species, and I've particularly mentioned annual ryegrass, Italian ryegrass, Copsfoot and fescue, and there'll be more traits. And the important traits that farmers tell us uh, uh, particularly are persistence um, and um, possibly a second order is a nutritive value. And there, there is some research underway at the moment in Vegeta or Agriculture Victoria on uh, estimating nutritive value and we haven't yet kicked off the research on persistence uh, to my knowledge. Um, Theory Australia had um, many partners in, uh, in development of the FEI um, and I've listed them on the board, Meat and Livestock Australia, um, Agriculture Victoria, Australian Seed Federation and Dairy New Zealand. Um, we couldn't do this without these people and these organisations and um, it's important that we do uh, recognise them. So. Thanks, Kath. I think uh, throw to you for. Uh, I think we finished what our presentation was. So happy to answer anything. Thanks, Ron, and thanks, Kevin, uh, for what I'm sure you all would agree is a very informative um, presentation about a very um, exciting innovation in the pastures and dairy industry. So we have got another question here: um, Is there a measure of variation or reliability? similar to the reliability of animal genetic merit ranks for a given trait. And I might throw that one over to Kevin. Yeah, thanks, Kath, and that's a really good question. Um, there's really two measures that you can use when interpreting this data. The first is the number of trials, so that gives you an estimate of the amount of data that's been used to estimate it, uh, the value. And the other, because these data are presented with statistical differences, the differences between the colour bars uh, give you that um, reliability. So unlike an animal index where there's, there's not a statistical cutoff, you're looking at a continuous set of data, we have used uh, statistics to come up with the different colour bands. Great. Thanks, Kevin. Another question. Um, this listener would like to see more on the economics of feed through the season and is concerned that um, it will be used to sell expensive alternatives to increase winter feed and take the emphasis off maximising utilising the spring to conserve uh, that spotter hmm, that's feed for the following year. Do you got any comments on that, Kevin? Yeah, so I think, again, this is a really good point that picks up differences between the value on individual farms and what individual farmers may do. So what we've done here is to try and look at averages for those regions, but we do acknowledge that when you come to an individual situation, either as a farmer yourself or a farmer client that you're advising, it is important to look at their individual requirements. So early on in the discussion process, it became clear that we did not want to present just an overall index. We want to provide the data that allows you to go a bit further. So it's a very good point and we do acknowledge that, but this was to try and get a point to start, we looked at an average value for farms in that region. Great, thanks Kevin. Um, okay, so are there any more questions coming in? 
No, well, certainly if anybody's got questions um, when we close the webinar, you could uh, email them into me and I will get them out to either Kevin or Ron and we can handle them that way. Um, we'll be very keen to hear your feedback about this webinar. Have you found it useful? Uh, what would be um, uh, maybe, you know, any, any feedback that you've got? And there's a quick survey at the end of this today, so we'd appreciate it if you take the time to complete it for us. So thanks for your time. We will be looking for your feedback. That'll be great. Um, and we'll put some of the questions and answers onto the Dairy Australia website as well. I just wanted to mention about when you go to the Dairy Australia website and you go to the Forage Value Index uh, page, there is now the tables are set up just that there is the Forage Value Index and, and all of the seasonal tables are in one file. So don't be put off when you say, oh, there's only four files there. We've actually streamlined it and tried to put it all in one file. There's also fact sheets and question and answer type fact sheets on the Dairy Australia website for everybody to have a look at as well. The last thing, this webinar has been recorded today and um, we'll be reviewing the recording and then we will be placing it on the website at a later point during the week. So no more questions. Um, I've got a few thanks here, which is great. Thanks, Kath. It's great, well, great and well done. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Ron. So thank you, everybody, for having uh, taking the time to listen and we will close it there. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, great.